Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and I mean, I see RVs all day, every day. It takes a lot to make me go, whoa. And this is one of those that made me go, whoa. This giant aircraft carrier, the USS Heritage Glen back here, this thing, it's, if I don't even want to call it a, a bunkhouse bath and a half fifth wheel. Could it serve those functions? Most certainly, but the, uh, the rear room of this thing, Frankly, it, it, it could be a bunk room, it could be a loft. It very much is an office. I don't think it needs a conversion. I think it is an office. It's a second living room. It, it has all of the things. I am blown away by the execution of this model. And this is not just feigned enthusiasm. I see stuff like this all day, every day, but uh, well, I don't even wanna say it. I don't see it like this. This is super cool. The Versa bunk arrangement back there, all the different functions it can provide, the loft, the heavy duty ladder that goes into this, but just all the good details, like the way the entertainment, they just knocked it out, all the windows open for airflow. You got that cool accessibility on this thing, the double air conditioner keeping this big monstrosity comfortable. It's not a bunkhouse, it's a rolling apartment and it rocks. Um, what really also shocked me, I've been very, very impressed about the surprisingly low weight ratings on these Heritage Glen fifth wheels. This thing, how many slides does this have? This has like four slides. It's a big giant quad slide. And I'm going to say only weighs 12,222 pounds, which I, I get that that's not an ultralight. I understand we're not half ton towable most certainly, but considering the size of this and, and all of the things that it has in it, that is just, shockingly lightweight to me. This is new to our lineup. Obviously, I'm pumped. I, I'm kicking myself that we didn't have this thing sooner because this is, this is awesome. This is really awesome. Let me know what you think about it as we go. And if you appreciate the fairway, I'm gonna point out some good with some bad. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, let me know that I'm doing the right job here for you. And, and folks, this has such a big open grand feeling about it. Uh, I mean, because it has that loft in the back, they did not have the opportunity to taper the roof line down. And the benefit of that is that here in the living room, it just feels enormous. It feels like you're inside this giant fully finished barn. I mean, that doesn't sound complimentary, but like you get what I'm saying, right? It just has this, it's just tall. It's big. It's wide open. It is very fun, very comfortable to be in here. Um, they, uh, it's, it's kind of a similar layout to an Arctic Wolf that we have here. Arctic does like a big full super slide party sofa. Some people love it. Some people hate it. What they did here is they went with a very traditional dinette and sofa, uh, arrangement. Now, if we look up here, you can see how there's the nice blackout nightshades all the way around. These are tinted windows. They all open for airflow. And what you're seeing here by default is that this has a, a big sleeper sofa option in it. Now, I cannot imagine with the room that's in the back of this that you're going to need extra sleeping capacity. But uh, if uh, mom, dad, Frank, cousin Alice, everybody in between the, uh, the neighbors and their friends, if everybody wants to come along, everybody can sleep in this thing. And if you're noticing, they did some very classy, like uh, white LED accent lights above the slides under the island. And I really like that little light right there above the entertainment center. Just something to help because it's so tall. That corner would otherwise be so freaking dark. It would uh, like it would just be like, I don't know, it'd be a downer, man. You don't have that here. The entertainment wall on this is well done. And in case you're wondering, if you're like me, you looked up there and you're like, oh, wow. They really hung that shelf all kinds of wonky. No, no. That is, uh, the more I got to looking at it, the more I realized with intent, they use something right there that has a simulated live edge on it just to kind of give it a little bit more shape and character and feel. So let me sit over here at the dinette. Entertainment rocks. You got that electric fireplace down there giving us some bonus heating without burning up your propane. Uh, although it could burn off your bunions if we get right over here into the sofa itself and kind of repeat the same exercise. You can see, uh, again, there's just, there's not a bad seat in this house. If we're going to be a little picky, yeah, the entertainment center's up a little high. But uh, at the same time, it's right next to the uh, the rear, I don't want to call it bunk room, but loft office second living space that can happen. Den. We'll call it a den. How about that? 
This has a rear den. <laughs> I love the model number on this one, though. 353 bed. Like, <laughs> bed. It's just there. Just plop. I don't, I don't know why. That always kind of... It gives me giggles. Now... The, uh, of course, I, I I had the nightshade pulled on that big window right there in the hallway. Um, that is really a, one of the only significant door side windows uh, visible here from the living room. This thing, it, it's really like, you know, if you're in the living room, you're in the living room. Otherwise, you're going to need to be outside to keep an eye on what's going on. Especially since it doesn't have any windows in the entry doors. Which, when we get to the half bath, is actually kind of beneficial because most manufacturers don't bother putting a privacy shade in those entry doors anyway so at least now you know it's not an issue <laughs> moving on here going back through this has an extra wide door notice how it actually just the whole wall is wide open it's a big sliding privacy door and one of the things that i like about this is it has the lights out kid switches when it's time lights out kids we can flip the switches off from here um uh, just to kind of give you the setup here, you already kind of saw the TV. Remember I said, I I think a den is a really good way to call this. I don't, you know, whether you want to call it an office, a bunk room, or whatever. You see that you've got the bed that folds down, but you've got the Versa bunk down below. That folds open into a 60 by 80 queen bed. Well, camp queen, short queen. But at the same time, um, you can just straight pull it out of the way. If you want to use it for a pack and play, you want to move some other furniture in here? You want to have a uh, like a mobile yoga studio? I'm not going to try that. And instead, now I'm going to stay away from trying any more yoga. Last time I did that, I ended up at the chiropractor's office for about a week. That did uh, that did not go well. I learned that I got to work on my core strength a little bit so I can do some yoga and work on my core strength. Like It's kind of a, a catch-22. Now, just to give you the full lay of the land here, you got that big ladder going up into the loft. We'll peek at that in just a second. But let me slide over into the VersaBunk kind of sofa situation. Ooh, plot myself down a little further down there than I thought it was. Look at this. There's this RV, you could say, has two living rooms. You want to talk, and, and I mean this in a non-derogatory fashion, about a mother-in-law suite? How about the fact that this is a true two-bedroom and then look what we have going on this, like, dresser desk space over here. Whether it is the mother-in-law, the kids, or... You know what? You know where this RV also really could work very nicely? is not just for uh, a, a general bunkhouse, not just as a guest room, but for families who have an adult child with maybe some very specific special needs, this could work very, very nicely. Because that whole conversation right there, the non-traditional camper... I think is actually far more traditional than people realize. Um, it, it, like, uh, let, let's say your family who has an autistic child or something like that, having their own private space back here. They have their own area that they get to decompress, their own little bubble. You know, you could leave this like a living room. They could use the loft bed above. They have their own half bath over here. They can hop right, uh, you know, through the door over here behind me, get to the kitchen or the refrigerator. It allows them to operate at their own pace, which, uh, you know, some people, some kids really need. But again, um, you could just use this as a straight amazing bunkhouse camper. But what I like about it is uh, if you've got big kids, older kids, you have adult friends, uh, you have group camping. This, I mean, there's really no limit to the different ways that you can use this thing. It is Maybe one of the most flexible designs I've ever seen in my career. Now, flipping around there, I will be very interested to see what people think about that heavy-duty but fixed ladder. Remembering that this is probably primarily used for the small kids. After I just got done getting on my, my you know soapbox talking about the non-traditional camper, I'm sure that this was really primarily designed for the littles in mind. And that ladder does stick out quite a bit, but... It's fixed. It's heavy duty. It holds a ton of weight. It's not removable easily anyway, unless you manually unscrew the thing, which I don't know why a lot of people would want to do that unless you decide you want to change it for something else. But just to show you around up here, you know, you've got this giant loft space above that entire den living bunk area below. So how much room is up here? Well, I figured I'd shove my fat butt in it and show you myself. Now this is 
certainly the most flattering angle of myself I've ever displayed on camera. But one of the things I kind of just realized as I looked over here, because of the vaulted ceiling that these have, it's not just tall. It's it's also, you know, double vaulted inside and out. It means that, like, a grown-up can actually roll over in here, you know, move around pretty freely without knocking into everything. Now, don't get me wrong, you're definitely belly crawling in and out of this thing, but could two adults fit up here? Yeah, I definitely think so. Something also you're not seeing is right over here, just off camera, there's a set of household outlets and USB plugs. If uh, you go back when I just kind of panned around up in the uh, the loft, I'm, I'm doing a camera motion like you have a clue what that means. <sighs> Such an idiot. Um, you get the idea. You'll get to see those things. Oh, cool. You can you can flip those off with a switch. Flip flip them off. <laughs> However, I will give them credit for this. Um, I've, I, I've climbed up in, in more than one bunk or loft in my lifetime. That is actually the easiest to get up and down uh, I, I think I've ran into in a very, very long time. Now, here's a better look at that big sliding privacy door, the barn door style here. But this is something Wildwood does a lot of, like especially in their destination trailers where they see an opportunity, they do something... A little different. This is just going to be a little mini attic. Now, uh, you definitely, you know, you don't want to be sleeping anyone up there. That is not for sleeping the baby. Although, I don't know, I could see maybe somebody making a little cat den out of that. Cats are pretty nimble. I'm sure they could make that jump across fairly easily. Um, probably, uh, I'm not recommending that though. I, I don't recommend putting any living creature of any variety up there. But well, it's just extra storage. All the duffel bags and stuff, any big stuff. Appliances like griddles you don't use every day. What you can kind of do is you can climb this ladder and you can just lean and reach over there. I really recommend you have an extra set of hands. A handy little spotter would not be a bad idea. But around the corner over here, again, it's a little tight in this little exchange. But we have ourselves our nice little half bath. Now that is a porcelain foot flush stool and I am at a weird angle for this let me uh we'll come back to the toilet i got a better way to show off the toilet uh up into the left of the toilet though you know what you could have gone to target and you could have got these exact same little baskets and put them up there but how thoughtful is it that wildwoods people did it right from the factory and now the installation of that is factory warranted so that they're not like eh, nope you put holes in your walls we're not going to cover it just to kind of showcase the toilet space from a little bit better angle here. Hopped out that little uh, exit door right there, which does have a deadbolt, by the way. You see that is porcelain, that is foot flush. And especially once you open that sliding door that privatizes the bathroom area, it's actually, I mean, pretty good even for, you know, bigger adult sized people, let alone kids. And I know these run long, guys. I know my videos run long and I talk a lot, but like, this is a big rig. It's a lot of money. If it were me, I think I'd really, I'd want to learn as much about this and see as much of it as I possibly could. That's why I take the extra time to climb into the loft and to open all the kitchen stuff, which we're about to do momentarily here after I give you a nice view of it coming from the other direction. And that's the kind of cool thing about this one. It, whether it's from the front to the back, um, there's really... No, like, primary way to navigate this one. It's, I don't know, it's just kind of cool that it has, like, a, a nice flow about it. Of course, when I'm not tripping over my own feet over here, it makes it uh, a lot nicer and more flowy. Now, I noticed my lights were actually dimming out on me. Uh, one of the only things about this behemoth is that it is so big, man, it can, it can really suck some volts in a hurry, so... Uh, just given the size, and I think the overall layout, I, I think it's more appropriate to consider this more of a, a park use type model versus a boondocker, but I don't know, who knows, everyone might feel different. Notice the outlets in that corner, that's an interesting little appliance corner, like you might be able to put a little coffee maker or something in there. And the, the way that they had to get creative with the kitchen, um, required them to do some things like adding that extra drawer below the oven, but... They, I think overall, I think they executed this very nicely. You see another set of appliance outlets in the corner by the fridge over there. And uh, speaking of the refrigerator, oh crap. What size is this? It's like 14 or 15 cubic foot. And although 
again, I kind of consider a giant layout like this something that's going to be more suited to like park and or seasonal use. This refrigerator, while not fully accessible in transit, if you hang with me, I'll take some time to close the slides up and show you this thing in road mode. It is surprisingly travel accessible. Are they, I'm telling you, man, they were really thoughtful and, and, and considerate in their execution of this. Like they knew what they were doing. Nothing in here happened accidentally. I've asked people this before, like on the mid bunk Heritage Glen, but that drawer there in the big pantry, what uh, what would you put in that thing? And I'll admit, it's like, I like the old sealed edge press membrane countertops that we're looking at. I will admit though, I am surprised to see a pedestal dinette in this. That is definitely the first thing I think I'd go changing in one of these. Now, before we head upstairs, one quick thing. They call it their floating stairs. Um, cute name, I guess. Obviously it, it, you know, has foot mounts. But I like how they basically hid the furnace uh, register return back there so that you can't really block it up and get stuff in the way. And tell me that ain't just begging to be a heck of a shoe garage. Now, one other thing uh, while we're standing over here, the, uh, the control panel, like there's just a control panel for all your normal like lights and switches and stuff, but you also can use the LCI one control system. And one of the cool things about it is you can control all of your auto leveling here remotely. So if you're hooking up to the nose of the RV, you can lower and raise the nose however you need to to get hitched up. You don't have to have a spotter on the ground potentially between the vehicle and the uh, the RV, which is kind of a sketchy, dangerous thing. Now, the bedroom or bathroom door does swing open, and it swings toward the stairs, which initially sounds kind of sketchy. But I want to point out the fact that this has a nice, tall upper deck, a long upper deck, so you have the room to step past the door and then open it up. And naturally, I forgot to turn on the lights. Pardon me. Sorry about that. I have recorded eight, eight or nine uh, RVs today, all like brand new, big in-depth videos like this. And I'm just, I'm on like autopilot right now. So it's all just kind of blending together. Now, when those drawers are not open uh, above the stool right there, you've got a uh, very fluffy, friendly space. And I love the fact that you got the two drawers. Like, that is something so many bathrooms are really void of. A couple little drawer areas right there. There's also, just like there's room around the toilet, there's a lot of room in the shower. This is a nice, big, spacious shower up here. Spacious shower. Yeah. Yeah, definitely spacious. Yeah. Charlie Babbitt. <laughs> Turning into Rain Man over here. Corner seat there in that shower. Clear door makes the whole room bigger. Uh, well, feel bigger anyway. Makes uh, A handy squeegee can keep the soap scum from building up on that. And uh, again... I can point out when something's weird. That toilet paper holder, that is quite the reach from the toilet. I, I think this floor plan is definitely one of those that would benefit from having one of those mobile toilet paper stands. Maybe, uh, I, I don't know. It just, it, that one felt like a bit of a stretch to me. Um, actually, what's weird is you could mount it on the swinging door that I'm standing next to. It would probably work pretty well. A uh, rain blocker vent fan up here, too. Something uh, a little bit different. I'll get you up on the roof and show you that housing. Same thing that Jayco uses on their Eagle series, if you weren't uh, familiar. And finally, our bedroom. And we haven't even stepped outside yet. This thing is just massive, and there's a lot to cover. Uh, dual air conditioners on these. The, the way that we like to bring them into Haywood RV, because this thing's, again, huge. I could not possibly imagine only having one air conditioner on this. Just absolutely no way. I don't care. Like some people say, well, maybe in the Midwest. No, nah, I don't even think of the Midwest. That is just way, way, way too much. Now, uh, that window over there, nice viewing window, opens for airflow. We got to see a nice looking little Rockwood Mini Light cruising by. It looks like a 2516S. Not that you care. I, I do that when I'm going down the highway with my... Anyone else ever do that? Any like big time RV enthusiast? You ever like go down the highway and be like, oh, there's that floor plan. And my wife is like... You know I don't care, right? <laughs> it's not that she doesn't like camping or anything. It's just like she doesn't geek out on this stuff like I do. But that, that's cool. You know, it's it's my thing. It's my thing. And she's got her things. And that's that's part of what makes, you know, life together fun is we have those different kind of things there. Now, you see the easy lift storage below the bed. This is a very interesting bed they use here. It's not an option. This is just the only bed they use. It's technically called an Olympic queen. It's 66 inches wide and it is 80 inches long. So it, it's a full length and you can get, you can like look up on Google or whatever, Olympic queen bed sheets. You can get normal sheets that fit this. 
if you wanted to go with a wider 70 by 80 king, you could. You see there is a little bit of gap action in the wall over there, um, uh, or in the slide box, as it were. But what do you think about that? I think it's an interesting but oddly adequate, effective size. Now, uh, for road mode with the slides closed, there's a funny thing here in the bedroom. This door doesn't normally want to completely open with the bed down. Now, if you just kind of lift the mattress a little, you can get the door past it. But I've always thought you should get like a really good door stopper or two and just keep it pegged open basically the entire time. Now, as I moonwalk hee -hee, down the stairs, you can see obviously the bathroom's on the left, uh, opposite of the Creedence Clearwater song that doesn't actually say the bathroom's on the right, but everybody seems to think it does. That's uh, That has to be. One of the most misheard lyrics. What is your favorite misheard lyric, by the way? I don't know why. I just, I, I think that kind of stuff is fun. Anyway, now when this is all closed up, she pinches off. It gets pretty bossy here. And the way the island is situated, you, you, you lose a chunk of this. But I still got all the packaging in play. We can still get to the critical parts of the fridge. So... We are nap crap and snack tastic. The question becomes, uh, what about everything back there? Now, obviously, you can't get to it from here, but we got to work around. Remember, we got that second entry door right here. It takes us straight into the bathroom. And one of the very interesting things about this floor plan is that with the slides closed, you can still totally get in here. If you need to, uh, you know, like throw some kids up in the loft, do a little, you know, overnight traveling kind of stay. This big heavy-duty ladder, they can climb right up there. You see, obviously, we got all the privacy shade stuff. This, for a giant fifth wheel like this, has pretty much the best traveling access I could even imagine it having. Holy cow, look at this thing. It's the size of an aircraft carrier, but again, it's like a rolling apartment. It's it's not, an, uh, it doesn't feel like a bunkhouse to me. It, there's such a nice level of refinement here. We're going to get all along the door side details of this. I actually want to curl around, um, take a look at the, uh, the nose and the pass-through compartment real quick, as long as we're up front here. The, uh, I'm actually kind of glad that this has that sort of tan color package on it. A lot of what we have here has really become like white and black and um, like Arctic has some gray to it, but uh, it, it's nice to have some color variants back in our lineup. Things got a little unintentionally homogenized here. Um, the reason I wanted to get you up front is to show, we, uh, in case you're curious, yes, it does have a spare, that's where it's located. But I also love the fact that these are pre-wired for two batteries if you are so inclined. Now, um, when you work with our team here, we include your first battery at no additional charge. If you wanted to add a second battery or get a different kind or something like that, those are all things we can assist you with. Naturally, there's you know a cost associated with them. We try to make sure though the RV is going to be fully perfectly functional uh, right from the moment you roll out of here. You're gonna have your basic sewer water hoses, all that stuff at no extra charge. Um, that being said, if you're going to add one accessory to your RV, I would definitely get a better sewer hose before you leave if uh, you know that's uh, you, you want to have a good dump station experience somewhere. Um, slides are all uh, slide awning prepped. And this is a little bit different, but again, smart, simple, thoughtful execution. The split open doors make it easier to get in here to this belly storage compartment. And the little kind of catch uh, wire that they have right there so that this door doesn't open over that uh, water heater so it doesn't end up melting the plastic or causing a fire or something like that. It, it It's just textbook Wildwood. They are so good at being so smart in a very simple, effective fashion. It, sometimes you just need a little piece of wire so it doesn't melt, you know? It doesn't have to always be incredibly super duper fancy. Simple docking station, but I like how like you see the full outside shower and this kind of throws people sometimes, but that is actually an antifreeze inlet, very similar to what Rockwood does right there. And notice there's not a whole intimidating bundle of like like switches and levers and things you gotta flip. It's just, there's a water heater bypass, that's it, go. It is so, so simple. Now this is not a drop frame belly, but it feels like one because this thing is very, very large in here. And in case you're wondering what is over there, if we jump to the other side, we can get a little better look at all these things. And I like how, even though they kind of, they're all sort of packed up here in the front bulkhead wall, they're also easier to reach and easier to see. Um, these RVs are roof prepped for solar. That uh, little sticker right there on that wall is where the charge controller could be located. 
We've got the <clears throat> Barley Popinator uh, bottle opener right there. Battery disconnect mounted up high where it's not likely for cargo to smash it. And that right there, that is our inverter. That's a 1200 watt inverter actually for the um, residential refrigerator that we saw to keep that thing running when you're going down the road. Now, I don't know if you saw that little silver flash just now, but if I get down here, you see how they do have a, uh, a radiant barrier layering going across that uh, bedroom, bathroom, upper deck right there. Uh, they also run that stuff through the belly for a little bit enhanced uh, efficiency. And that's really cool. And I love the fact that that baggage door has the double magnet holdbacks, but there is kind of one thing here that made me go, huh, I don't know if that was necessarily the best executed way to do that. They put a TV mounting bracket directly above that thing. And, you know, with the magnet holdbacks, it means that baggage door folds flat like against the wall. So if you take the time to put a TV up there, you're gonna have to take the TV down to get into the pass-through unless you crawl through from the other side. My, if, if, if there's a couple simple little things I could change, and I hope you, you appreciate the fact that I point out the good with the bad, um, I would like to see that uh, bracket moved actually over onto the face of the kitchen slide, and I would like to see a couple at least frosty glass windows inserted into the doors. I say that about all the Wildwoods because they all kind of do the same thing. Now, I haven't had a chance to check my spec sheet yet. I don't know the exact size of these awnings. I know that that is not a small awning, and it doesn't really bother me that the kitchen slide is occupied under part of that awning because there's enough of it left over that I got plenty of room for a picnic table by that baggage door entertainment combo center, whatever you want to call that. But also the fact this thing's long enough, they said, heh, Put a second awning on it, who cares, you know? There's just, the whole side of this thing is, is patio space. <laughs> and right here, uh, having a fridge and a door straight to at least the half bath will cut down on so much foot traffic getting trekked through the RV. But look at even th the half bath door, what you might call the off door, still has that extra large entry handle, still has, the uh, easy step adjustable more ride steps and still has its own dedicated black tank flush. Uh, I see all kinds of RVs all the time and that is something a lot of big, fancy, heavy, expensive rigs fail at doing very frequently that they really, really nailed here. I'm, again, it's, you could say that there's a couple things maybe that this is lacking, but the really key clutch details that you're going to use every day that everyone's going to use, they nail really, really well. And for a smaller compact camp kitchen, that is well done. Now, it doesn't have a dedicated sink, admittedly. It does have the little sprayer port here, though, where if you wanted to, uh, you know, hook up a little cold water sprayer and, and hose the kids down after they've been in the lake, you can do that. One other quick little note here for you. Um, not that it really affects anything. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this. The griddle doesn't totally close. Uh, what you actually have to do here, you actually have to uh, <coughs> flip it off, um, which doesn't mean what it sounds like. <laughs> you have to flip the griddle. So what I like about this is this is, by the way, that's all galvanized rolled steel. So it's, uh, you know, if you put something hot in there, it's not like it would melt, but it's really a bad idea regardless to trap a big chunk of heat like that. So what that design really forces you to do is be safe whether you want to or not. It forces you to absolutely wait until that griddle is cool enough that you can flip it uh, off the <laughs> griddle. I can't. Let me flip it over. That's what I should be saying. I couldn't think of the phrase flip it over. <laughs> but you, you get what I'm saying, right? You can't put the hot thing away. Now, this is really nice what they did down here. You've got a bumper and the accessory uh, hitch on the back. Normally, you only get one or the other. So if you want to put your sewer hose tube in there, you can do that. Now, um... Everything else from here, we've pretty much seen everything. I do want to point out that all the windows are tinted. They all have those uh, slide awning prep points on them for the LCI uh, awnings. But while we're down here, let me get you over before we get to the upper deck so you can see that enclosed, heated, radiant barrier protected accessibility. And uh, every single holding tank has its own tank heater, which is really, really nice for extending your camping season, and giving you some protection and peace of mind. Uh. Ah, got a cramp, got a cramp. Crouched for too long, haven't had enough water today. <sighs> Ooh, gonna walk that off.
carry on uh, amongst yourselves. Ooh. Nothing like a little uh, gluteus crampius right before you climb up a ladder at a neck breaking height, regardless. Now, up here, it's, it's fairly barren. It's simple, it's clean, it's effective. It does everything it needs to do. There's your roof solar prep plug, by the way, in case you feel like building it for a little bit of uh, battery tending or off-grid function. Um, and also very similar, frankly identical, to what um, Eagle uses. They have a different kind of Max Air vent fan, and I just I like you folks just to get to see that real quick. Um, it What it's doing, basically, is a factory rain blocker. Now, those kind of roof vent covers, like you see over there in that Rockwood, they're very popular, and you could add them onto nearly anything, but isn't it nice that you don't have to? And isn't it even nicer that the installation of that is now covered under your manufacturer's warranty? So, I mean, <laughs> it's big, it's, it's beautiful. There's just, there's not much it doesn't do other than fit in my garage. I would squirrel this one away if I had the opportunity, but I, I don't. <laughs> Again, let me know what you think about it. I'll leave you a link in the video description for pricing and availability. I will also leave you a link to a couple somewhat similar floor plans like the Arctic 3770. Really along very similar veins. It doesn't have the bunk room slide out, but very, very similar overall, uh, overall arrangement and, and very much uh, all up in each other's face. And I'll ask you guys, take a look at that video and let me know in either video which one do you think wins in a fist fight? I'd love to hear that. Uh, short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, every happy, happy rolling apartment. Doesn't roll off the tongue as well, does it? Hmm. <laughs>